At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. Unfortunately, I am now confronted with another problem, which I would rather have done without. You see, last night, Miss Adams also went missing. I have had my people searching for her all over the island. Alas, to no avail. It so happens that both her mental and her physical health are extremely fragile. I'm worried that the same thing happened to her as to your mother. Also, I would appreciate it very much if you could tell me what you were doing on the floor in her room in the early hours It's quite of normal. I, I can explain everything. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. You see, Sir Gregory is about to arrive. And he's taken Elizabeth's disappearance very, very seriously. Please, reassure him so that we can talk about your mother. William, I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments. myself look more suspicious than I already do. Good evening, Monsieur de Richet. Likewise, Sir Gregory. Well then, let us begin. Gregory, Louis told me we needn't be concerned. Of course. Monsieur de Richet, the situation seems to escape your grasp, so I won't beat about the bush. Did you kill Elizabeth Adams? What are you talking about? I, I only helped her. We talked and she wanted to leave. I, I imagine that's what she did, right? We have found no trace of her leaving, monsieur. So allow me to have my doubts. Nor have we found any reason to believe that Louis is lying. We must remain calm, Gregory. We have found no evidence that would suggest that Elizabeth has been murdered. For the time being, she has only disappeared. Let's stick to the facts, if you please. Well, where is she then? She's probably gone back home. She didn't want to stay here any longer. She seemed very uncomfortable here. Why imagine the worst? Until there is evidence to the contrary, your mother is still lurking nearby, and I dare not think what would happen were they to meet. Damnation, William! This is a fiasco! Sir, you don't seem to realize just how serious this is! Let's try and remain calm, Gregory. In any case, it would be far better if Elizabeth really has left the island, as Louis says. Why do you think she wanted to leave? She was terrorized by my mother's presence here. Just the thought of coming face to face with her was unbearable. Did she tell you why? Yes, she brought the subject up. I'm sorry, Louis. It couldn't have been easy to hear. For your sake, I sincerely hope that she got there safely. Monsieur de Richet, I apologize if my words seemed a little... Abrupt. I dare not think what would happen if Elizabeth came across your mother on the island. Your generosity may well cost you dearly. I understand, my lord. I certainly regret it. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Gregory, Louis told me we needn't be concerned. Of course. Monsieur de Richet, 
The situation seems to escape your grasp, so I won't beat about the bush. Did you kill Elizabeth Adams? Er everything's all mixed up in my head. I I'm sorry. Look, we had a few drinks, and I think I remember putting laudanum in the wine, and I, I started getting dizzy. I don't remember anything about last night. I don't think you could have provided a worse answer to that question. We must remain calm, Gregory. We have found no evidence that would suggest that Elizabeth has been murdered. For the time being, she has only disappeared. Let's stick to the facts, if you please. Well, where is she then? Last night when we talked, she said she felt uncomfortable here and spoke of leaving but didn't say where to. Knowing Elizabeth, I am sure she must have spoken to you about your mother. I don't see the connection. What has my mother got to do with this? Gregory is suggesting he isn't certain that Elizabeth has left the island and that some misfortune might well have befallen her during the night. But that's not the case. Well, that's what you say. You are the last person who saw her alive. There might well be any number of reasons why you wanted her silenced. No one can substantiate your claim that she left as you said she did, Louis. Monsieur de Richet, we have given you every opportunity to reassure us as to the fate of Elizabeth. You have only succeeded in plunging yourself into deeper trouble. I will never rest until we are certain that Elizabeth is indeed alive. I assure you, my lord. We are obliged to believe you for the moment. Consequently, I shall make you a promise in return. If ever we find out that anything has happened to poor Elizabeth, I shall personally see to it that your head will land in a basket. You don't need us for any of this, so come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Is there nothing you want to say, Louis? I... Uh, it wasn't me. I, I, I didn't kill her. I, I'd much rather have met you under different circumstances. Lord Mortimer, believe me, I'm very conscious of the gravity of the situation. <laughs> Everything seems to point to me as the one who killed Elizabeth, but I swear I am innocent. Out of respect for your mother, rest assured that I do want to believe you. And all I want is to be able to prove it to you. When do we start? We already have. Tell me, Louis. How do you feel? I feel like a rat trapped in a maze. Interesting. I beg your pardon? Sarah also felt like she was trapped like an animal. Where are you going with this, my lord? Sarah's behavior grew odd before her disappearance. Her attitude changed, she became prey to outbursts of violence and a number of temporary absences. I'm just trying to make sure that you don't go getting lost like your mother did. You're not suggesting that I might have killed Elizabeth and that I don't remember, are you? I don't know, Louis. It's just that what with your mother and now you, it's rather a lot. The more I take stock of the situation, the more I'm under the impression that you've been set up. But, before going any further, I must inform you that Sir Gregory is about to arrive. He is coming to question you about the murder of poor Elizabeth, whom he was very fond of. He is quite determined to find the culprit, whomever they may be. So, convince him of your innocence. Then we can continue this conversation. William, I would like to see you a moment before we begin. In private. Let's step outside a moment. Louis, this will only take a few moments.
Let's take this chance to look around. Please, sit back down, Louis. This sort of behavior is not working in your favor, young man. Monsieur de Richet, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you are going to tell us everything that happened last night, without leaving any detail out. First things first, how did your evening begin? I was in the corridor and I was about to go to bed. Elizabeth appeared as if from nowhere and rushed toward me. She took me by the arm and led me to her room. You say she... led you? All right, we'll accept that. Continue. We were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? She was panicked. She claimed she had just seen my mother on the island. Did she say where she saw her? Huh. I seem to remember something about cliffs. Let us continue. And what happened next? Then she told me she had poured laudanum in my glass. The next minute I was on the floor. When I woke up, she was lying in a pool of blood. That is all you have to say? You expect us to believe that you have no idea what happened to her? Yes, because I'm telling you the truth. How can you possibly expect us to believe you? Gregory, we must consider every possibility. Louis, do you have any idea who could have done it? Well, even if I can't believe for a single instant that my mother could have murdered someone in that manner, she might have wanted to stop Elizabeth from speaking about their mutual past. And things might have turned nasty. It is indeed a possibility. I would like to thank you for helping us shed light on what happened last night. To be honest, you are not the only suspect. I'm prepared to believe you were drugged. Our poor Elizabeth hid the stuff everywhere, and I could smell laudanum on you three yards away. So you knew it wasn't me from the start? We weren't sure. Louis, I am sorry, but everything points in the same direction. I only know one person on this island who might have had a big enough grudge against Elizabeth, who has no alibi, and whose behavior is, well, suspect. Not to mention dangerous. Tell me what happened before my arrival. I think I've been patient enough. You don't need us for any of this. So come along, Monsieur Peru. We are leaving. Louis, do you have any idea who could have done it? Why don't you ask him where he was last night? Monsieur Peru, what would his motive be? Do you have any proof? No, not exactly, but he'd already wrapped her up once. 
Monsieur de Richet, you should not accuse the first person to come along without at least some proof. I'm sure you are worthier than that. Can you think of anyone else? Maybe Mr. Washington. But of course! And what would his motive be? I believe he thought Elizabeth was stillborn. Washington could have been trying to protect the secret of his vice president, Elizabeth's father. Sorry, Louis, but it so happened that Mr. Washington spent most of the time with Duchess Hillsborough. She confirmed it. Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit of the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis. <sighs> Unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen, if you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By do stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't you? What? Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. If that's all the proof you have before dispensing justice, th then you'll have innocent blood on your hands. There's no proof I, I could have committed the murder. You do know, sir, that the first impression is often the right one. We found you near dear Elizabeth's body. What could be simpler? Goodbye. No! Monsieur de Richet, you were found standing over Miss Adams' body. We must shed some light on your responsibility in this tragedy. We shall then decide on your fate. But you must know that if you do not convince us of your innocence, it will cost you dearly. Now you are going to tell us everything that happened last night, without leaving any detail out. First things first, how did your evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came upon us. Oh! So you were with the Duchess? Yes, we were talking. We were walking up the stairs, and it was late. Where did you come from? Uh, I don't remember. I, I think we came from the Grand Hall. Oh, isn't that surprising? Do continue. We were heading for our rooms when Elizabeth burst into the corridor, barely dressed. She was panic-stricken and insisted on speaking to me. So I found myself in Elizabeth's room. We sat down together. She insisted we have a drink, or she would refuse to confide in me. Hmm. What exactly did she want to speak about at such a late hour? Well... She was terrorized by the fact that you invited her at the same time as my mother. She was surely victim to misconceptions, but felt trapped. She was convinced she was going to die. But why? Let's say she didn't believe in coincidences, shall we? You'll admit that the chances of my mother and Elizabeth bumping into each other on this island are pretty slim. Sorry if I'm putting my nose where it doesn't belong, my lord, but why did you invite them at the same time? Elizabeth spoke to you about her past. She came here so you could help her fight her demons. She must have told you about her encounters with my mother. Remember, Louis, I was not the one who invited dear Elizabeth. 
Indeed, it was me. And you seem to forget it was you that we found right next to poor Elizabeth's body. You had better start proving your innocence rather than trying to cast doubts on William here. Let's finish this, William. I don't rightly know how we can give the benefit of the doubt to an individual who can manipulate the truth to absurdity. Louis, <sighs> unfortunately, you haven't managed to convince us. You will agree that you had the time and the motive to commit the murder. I... I am devastated, but I must agree with Gregory and declare you guilty. Gentlemen! If you please, wait. There is something else. Elizabeth ended up telling me why my mother had tried to treat her. The voices in her head, is that it? She spoke to you about them too, didn't she? Gentlemen, I'm not a doctor, but she was persuaded she heard voices in her head. You don't think she might have killed herself, By do stabbing you? herself nine times. I find that extremely unlikely, don't what? you? What? Stabbed nine times? It appears that the murderer walked up and stabbed her several times from behind. We counted nine gashes in all. All of them were relatively shallow, and they were all given from roughly the same angle of attack. Traces of blood appear to prove that she was standing throughout the attack. If that's all the proof you have before dispensing justice, then you'll have innocent blood on your hands. There's no proof I, I could have committed the murder. You do know, sir, that the first impression is often the right one. We found you near dear Elizabeth's body. What could be simpler? Goodbye. No! You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. At last we meet Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. But an act of horrific violence occurred during the night. And I do not know if this is linked to the disappearance of Sarah. There's a possible link to my mother. I, I hope you'll let me know. In the early hours of the morning, Elizabeth Adams was found dead in her room, savagely mutilated with a knife. I'll get straight to the point, Louis. According to the initial elements at my disposal, you were the last person to see her alive. Yes, last night we... Uh... Do you suspect me? I want you to tell me everything that happened last night, and leave nothing out. Tell me, how did the evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came up to us. She was in a state of panic and insisted that she needed to speak to me. She said she feared for her life. I took my leave of the Duchess and followed Elizabeth to her room. Mm -hmm. Continue. She insisted we have a drink, without which she refused to confide anything. What exactly did she want to speak about? She claimed she saw my mother the previous evening on the cliff, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I will send someone as soon as possible. But do go on. I refused to go on drinking with her. She already seemed drunk and her conversation became confused. So, then she ordered me to get out. If only I'd stayed. Don't blame yourself, Louis. How could you have known? But thank you for this new information. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. 
I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I understand. What do you intend to do? I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. However, there may be some new developments, but I, I don't know if they are linked to your mother. We have found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. I'm afraid she was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. Who, who could have done it? That is precisely what I would like you to help us determine, Louis. Duchess Hillsborough informed us that she accompanied you at the beginning of the evening. You apparently bumped into Miss Adams, who wanted to speak to you. We are told you turned her away, and she went away on her own. That's correct. Do you know what she wanted to see you about, by any chance? She seemed upset about something. I thought she was under the influence of alcohol. But we didn't really speak. Pity. The poor child was probably trying to find help. I thought it could wait until tomorrow. Hmm. Apparently not. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. 
find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So, I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I believe I've identified the murderer. Really, Louis? All right, then. Please, think carefully before you give me your answer. This is a very, very serious accusation. From what I've found out, I... I... I believe that my mother is the culprit. Even though... I find it hard to accept. Sarah? But why her? I found out that there was a, a long history between Elizabeth and my mother. She had been her personal doctor and had tortured her throughout her childhood. Ah. Oh. And so she could have tried to silence Elizabeth so the truth wouldn't get out and damage her reputation. Well, it's possible. Have you anything else? I found a piece of fabric that appears to have belonged to her and proves she was present at the scene of the crime. Interesting. Anything else? The print left on the knife near the body was left by a slender hand, without a doubt the hand of a woman. And there aren't many female guests. I see. Anything else, Louis? I think that there is more than enough evidence here. Indeed. It's very worrying. Everything seems to indicate that your mother is responsible for Elizabeth's murder. Given the distinguished guests and the political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Now that we've examined the question from all sides, maybe you could explain to me why you asked me here, my lord. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She isn't missing, you know. What? What do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. Mm, that doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. 
Did my mother intend to finance a war? I'm not sure that I follow. No, your mother's aim was not so much to partake in a war, but rather to make Monsieur Bonaparte accountable. France is in turmoil, and having support of a military man can often come in handy, Louis. You'll see. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what he said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris. We were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? I can't remember exactly. Von... Uh, something or other. Von Volner? No. Not your friend, Mr. Von Volner. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? I'd like to find a logical answer, but I just can't see anything. Apart from the fact that she might have lost her mind. Since I came here, I've ceased to understand her. That, plus what I've found out about her past, and I'm left with the bitter feeling that I never really knew her. Hmm. I can understand you beginning to feel that way after these past two days. But I'm sure all will become clear once your mother reappears. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jersey, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. <laughs> Are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the Siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. 
Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. One last thing, although I don't know if there is a connection. I'm listening. A gate was forced the other night near the wharf. Nothing serious, just a few small things damaged. Sorry, my lord, but I was searching for leads to my mother. I thought I was hot on her trail and didn't take any precautions. Well, you could have reported it to a servant. But never mind. I shall put it down to your ardor and anxiety. However, please try to respect my estate in future. I certainly will. Please accept my sincerest apologies. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And what has Monsieur Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well... Let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if it is not important. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous. Bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. 
Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you, as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. <laughs>